are gonna make you a better mixer today. How? Well, I'm gonna show you what I discovered this week. This is a device, a plugin, a piece of software that I've known about for some time, and I've only used it sporadically. But because my house is being renovated for sale so I can move across the pond, I have all this time on my hands while they're banging around me and rebuilding the porch and doing the kitchen. And I'm like, well, you know, how can I use my time effectively because I can't really record? So I took this magical piece of software called Plugin Doctor, some of you may be aware of it, by DDMF. This is one of the most essential things you could own in your arsenal. You heard me talk about recently that you don't need to own every plugin on the market. Um, in fact, you're probably wasting your money. A lot of them sound alike. A lot of them sound similar. You can make some sound like other ones. However, however, a lot of times, Stuff that's modeled on hardware has specific tendencies, specific curves, values that come inherent to it. But that said, some of those that can be modeled from the exact same piece of hardware will respond radically different in practice. So I took all of the plugins that I use regularly, some new ones that I've only tested sporadically in sessions, and then some other ones that I was curious about and threw them in Plugin Doctor. And that's what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you why this is important and why you know, over the course of two days, the last two days, I've improved my mixing by 50%. Yes, by 50%. How is that possible? Well, if I have 10 plugins, five on the channel that I've recorded my lap steel on, say, and then five on the master bus, but I've improved them 5% each, boom. Next thing you know, the thing sounds amazing and you've improved it 50%. That's the 5% rule that I've told you about before. Every little 5% matters, but by using Plugin Doctor, you can do it much faster. And furthermore, it allowed me to make presets because I've been doing this so long, 32 plus years of pro audio, that I could pull up software, I could pull up plugins and tweak them based on their natural tendencies and use, build a curve. Because when you change the knobs, as you will see, it changes, you'll see the, the analysis change that I could make presets without even listening to the audio. And then later when I am, you know, put it into a real session and put it to practical use, I tweak them a little more and then save those presets. And not only are my mixes 50% better now because the mix I had done three days ago is now 50% better today, but I can work faster. And now I have a bunch of presets because I've compared all my plugins. So another thing it's done is I've, I've basically narrowed my plugin favorites down even more, created presets for those, so I've got less to deal with and I can work faster. Let's check it out. All right, so the way this works is you can pull up two plugins at a time so, for instance, I'm going to pull up, uh, let's pull up uh, something from Pulsar Modular. Pulsar Modular is one of my favorites. Let's pull up the P42 Climax, which is a very popular saturation, a high-end saturation device. Now, look at the screen. You can see, let me pull the, the device out of the way here. You can see the curve. You can see how it automatically, without changing any knobs, how it's affecting your audio straight out. A little low bump, a little high shelf, and a little low mid scoop. I mean, right? Amazing. So now let's pull in the Magnum, which is their clipping distortion device. Let's pull that to the side. 
And look how the Magnum, because it's a clipping device, so until you change the knobs, you're not gonna get that much. But look, there's a little dip at around 15 hertz. There's a bump at around, you know, between five and 10, and then the rest is flat. But watch what happens. Let's see if I can do it over here. As I start to turn the knobs, turn that on, woo, look at that. Turn that on, it changes. Let's turn off the, let's mute. You can mute channels. So now we're just looking at the Magnum. Let's turn up the saturation. Let's um, turn up the O2. Let's put the oomph on. There you get a little bump. There you get a Paltec-like little tweak to the bump by pulling up the Q. Let's pull that Q a little bit more down. Let's see what happens with the suite. We can turn that up. And then the saturation turns out. I mean, so look at that. Now you can go, oh, okay. But let's go back to default. There's your default. So. Every time you turn something on, look, there's a little bump. Ooh, there's a little bump. I haven't even turned any knobs. You're turning things on. You're seeing things change. It's extraordinary, right? So let's just do a little bit here. Sweet. I'm just, now remember, we're just looking at the red line of the Magnum, right? Now let me go back to default on the Magnum. Boom. So, and we can do the same with the P42 Climax. So we'll turn that back on. We'll mute the Magnum. That's where it is default. There's your low pass filter, your high pass filter, your low shelf, your cue for your low shelf, your saturation, your high shelf, where your high shelf starts. And all of this is going to affect your audio, so it's why it's important to know. So now, that was just one example. Um, so now we're gonna clear this out. And we're gonna look at distressor plugins, okay? So the first one we're gonna look at is the arouser, which is the original from, EMI, uh, from Eli, who make, made the original distressor. This is their plugin. And you can see it's pretty flat. There's a little roll off below 10 Hertz, but it's pretty flat. So we'll put that over to the left. Now we'll load another one. Let's load, what would be a good one here? A uh, soft tube, whatever they call that one. Let's see. The Empirical Labs Ecomp. So they licensed it from Empirical Labs, but as you can see on the screen, even though the arouser is Empirical Labs, Eli, the Empirical Labs that's licensed to SoftTube is pretty different. I mean, there's a far more roll off. There's a roll off, I would say, starting at 50 Hertz down to 10. The other one's much flatter, you know, and then the rest, they're, they're pretty close. They're pretty close except for that low end roll off. But considering that one is licensed from the company that made the hardware and they're both modeled on the hardware, it's very informative, right? Right, so now let's look at two other. You see, you can see, remember these because I'm gonna clear these out. The pink line is the Eli arouser and the red line is the soft tube empirical labs. All right, so now the XT comp from Kiev, and look at that. That's a distressor as well. And that is flat and then starts rolling off starting you know, roughly around two kilohertz. Pretty interesting. So this shows you how 
each model of a particular plugin that's modeled on software are not necessarily the same. And why is this important? How is this going to make your mixing better? Very simply, you will understand by looking at what it imparts naturally, simply by opening it up in your session, what it's likely to do to your audio before you even change any knobs. And that's important because what I've discovered, and just talking about these distressors, right? To me, the arouser sounds better on vocals and bass. The Keev XT comp sounds better on drums. And it makes sense when you see how it affects the audio naturally coming in. I rarely grab the Empirical Labs one from SoftTube, but hey, there's nothing wrong with that one either. But I would definitely not put that on drums or bass before using the Keeve X comp. Now, let's see if we just start changing. You're not gonna see what's going on while I'm doing this, but we're going to just change some knobs here. Now look, I changed some knobs and look where the curve is. So knowing where you start, now I'll go back to default, boom, it changes things. So if you know where to start, you can be a better mixer and you can create better presets without even listening to the audio. It'll make you go faster, it'll make you It'll make you understand what you already own and how it works before you even turn a knob. It's very, very important. It's very, very useful. DDMF Plugin Doctor. I mean, it's incredible. And for one last little thing, and let me clear this out, and then I'm gonna pull in, let's see. I'm gonna pull in two Varimuse, okay? This is the Pulsar Moo. Look what that does automatically before you even turn a knob, right? Now, let's add another Moo. This one's a new one called from Wave Grove called Varus. Now, look, Varus is totally flat until I'm gonna choose a preset, I'm gonna choose my preset. And that's the red, right? So, and that's the red. So these are both Varimu compressors, both based off of the same, relatively based off the same hardware. And you can see right there that they're responding differently right out of the box. So that gives you some knowledge and facts and graphs to think about. I made my presets with it yesterday, made my mix 50% better overnight. DDMF Plugin Doctor, again, you can only do two plugins at a time, but I literally went through everything I own and auditioned them to see which ones I prefer. So I hope that was useful. I hope that was helpful. Grab yourself some Plugin Doctor. I'm sure they have, you know, a trial period or something for it. It's not usually very expensive though, because it's just an analysis tool, but it's an awesome analysis tool and it'll make you a better mixer. Your mixes will get better, I guarantee you. DDMF Plugin Doctor. Let me know if you have any questions.